well, what is it, Monday? I think it's Monday. Monday. Every day is just a day for me. You know, just another day, another dollar. You know how we do it. How's everybody doing today? It's been a while since I went live from the car. think I'll do some for, format of, EL, oh shit, of a live uh, EMA. Give you guys some updates here with the Merlin Swap token and the IDO that's taking place. Actually, tomorrow was supposed to be today, but um, they got some, some changes. So that will be taking place tomorrow along with the Rufi token that's being minted or on pause right now supposed to be the first runes token to go live on merlin chain and uh we could talk about a little bit about the rune stone and sat hunter inscription tool we got all the updates for you all do share like and uh let me know if you got any questions for me now is your time to ask me your questions I never really talked about Denver on a live stream since I came back. That was pretty damn badass. Went down there, learned a lot, got a lot of um, content out the way, did a lot of interviews, you know, learned so much about Bitcoin Layer 2s, the whole, you know, decentralized finance movement we're seeing happening on Bitcoin, along with, you know, um, a bunch of other things like modular blockchains. That was pretty cool. And we're also heading out to Hong Kong. Yeah, heading out to Hong Kong. What's up, guys? What's up, Sully? What's up, MG? How you doing? Good morning, guys. Good morning. Who's that? Big Kimono. That's bigger Bitcoin. Working on watching Francis, eh? Hopefully, you can lose some weight for me. You know, many times when people ask me, you know, they're like, hey, bro, I like to work on my arms. You know, I want some nice biceps. I want a nice chest. You know, I want abs. For me, it's like, yo, I want a jawline. I want a chisel jawline. Is there a workout for that? That's when you know you're losing that body fat. So, yeah, as people are coming in, I appreciate y'all. Do smash the like buttons. I'm going to update you guys on a couple of things, and we're going to talk about a couple of things. If you have any questions, now is your chance to ask. Okay, so let's move on. So, yeah, Merlin Swaps IDO, the MP token, as you guys know, there have been some form of, uh, some sort of uh, congestion and such. So, not too sure if this is the reason why Merlin Swap themselves are prolonging the IDO launch to be tomorrow. Right, this will happen for about two days. I think a lot of people were asking how could they get in. Um, now, I've done a video on this. I've read the Medium post for you guys. And basically, there's going to be three mechanisms or three pools. Smash the like buttons, guys, please. Right, number one, you can get in with M Bitcoin or MBTC. Okay, that's when you get your M points and all that stuff. <coughs> if you use Bitcoin like myself, you could get the M Bitcoin and then you could use that pool. I think there's 420. Was it 420, um, how much tokens? 420 million? No, 400, no, no some shit, I forget. 420,000 or something like that. I can't remember the number. 420, whatever it is, um, tokens in each pool. Depending on how many people get into those pools, that's going to dictate, yeah, how many, um, you know, tokens you would get. So essentially, you want to be in that particular pool that has the least amount of people, so you get the most amount of tokens, right? Um, you could also get in with Merlin Chain Bitcoin, and you could also get in with Huhu and Voya, right? As you guys saw, what's up, GG? How you doing? Um, as you guys saw what happened, right? Well, we saw what, what Huhu did. If you guys have been following the channel, we've covered that since day one, really. I think it was like the first or not even the second day, the, the first night you could have gotten on that action. It was 0 0.004, whatever, you know, and change. It's gone up since about 30x, give or take all-time high. So we're laughing to the bank, all the way to the bank. Also, Voya did pretty good too. So this is why we're very bullish on this MP token. We believe that how Merlin Swap, their actual own token, we think it's gonna do good over time, right? Let's see what happens. I believe the IDO price is what again? Is it 0 0.001? Was it 0 0.0001? Pretty sure it's 0 0.001, right? And that's what we're gonna be looking at, guys. So I personally believe the pool that's gonna have the least amount of participants, which means you're gonna get the most amount of MP tokens. Yeah, 0 0.001. Um, and how much tokens are in each pool? Is it 420 million? Some shit like that, right? I think, you know, for the most part, a lot of people already has Merlin Chain Bitcoin, right? What's up, guys? Thank you for joining. Do smash the like button. Appreciate y'all. A lot of people obviously has Merlin Chain Bitcoin, and they also have Voya and Huhu. So I'm expecting those two pools to be filled up the most, which means you're going to get the least amount of MP. Now, if you could get um, the, the, this, uh, what's it? The uh, MBTC, then you're good. I think that's going to have the least amount of participants, which will give you more of these MP tokens. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, for some reason, this BTC layer 2 fucks my head up. Yeah, I don't know, bro. I've been doing a bunch of shit too, man. I mean, like, obviously, we're covering Merlin Chain Air, but there's so many opportunities, right, within the whole layer 2 ecosystem, the whole Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem. So I've been uh, looking in other areas. As I told you guys, that's what the whole premise of going down there for was, right? What's up, guys? Thank you for joining. Do smash the like buttons. We're talking about... You know, how you could get into Merlin Swap's own token. Guys, imagine this. We flew down to Denver to find the fucking co-founder of Merlin Swap so we could ask him questions on your behalf. I hope you appreciate that shit. I flew my ass and left my family here in Toronto so I could go take care of you guys to find this individual, okay? We didn't even know what to expect. We didn't even know if we were going to get into the damn summit because the tickets were like, it was kind of late. You know, luckily we pulled a few strings and I had my people talk to their people and, you know, we made it happen. So, um, hope you guys appreciate that. Come on, guys. We got like almost 100 people here and only 22 likes. Smash the damn like button if you appreciate content like this. Smash the damn like button if you appreciate motherfucking 30X on an aftermarket coin. Not even a pre-sale. On an aftermarket coin. Come on now, man. You know the saying? You aren't bullish enough. You're not appreciative enough. <laughs> cool. So that is how you do that. And um, again, like I said in my video that I made on this when I was reading the Medium article, you know, if you like making money, okay, seriously, if you like making money, if I think we all like making money, if you like making money, you might want to get into this damn ideal. Okay, I just don't see how who who is going to do 30x, how Voya aftermarket is going to do 15x, and this thing does, I don't know, do x. I just don't see it. You know, I think this one might provide the best gains. We'll see. You know, you, sometimes it's hard to outcompete a meme coin because those things just fucking moon. And it is the first, um, you know, token really to go live on Merlin Swap. So that has, you know, its own sort of like characteristics that can remain on the top. But come on, man. The damn freaking exchanges, like actual token, we should have expectations for that. Let's be honest. Cool. So I am going to try to get in some of those. Um, I'll also be looking for a good entry point when it goes live on the market. And then I'll buy in. That's pretty much what I did with Voya. Call me. Thank you for the likes. Call me lucky. But with Voya, it might have been luck. Because I told you guys, I made like 32 wallets for, for Voya. 90 times 32. Dude, I got like about 18 grand. Make it rain. It's raining fucking gains. When I wake up in the morning, I go take a shit. I see 100x in the toilet. I eat, breathe, sleep fucking gains, bro. You know what I'm saying? And we don't wait for it to land on our lap. We pack the suitcase, we pack the bags, we pack the equipment, we bring the cameraman, and we go looking for it in Denver. And we're going to go to Hong Kong and do the same shit. See what I'm saying? So expect more alpha, you know. And uh, we might be getting a pre-seal in the community real soon. You know, just negotiating right now. I gotta be honest, guys. Right now, this time around, it's actually a little bit harder. For these top tier projects, like, it's very hard to convince them to get the community in. Okay, guys? I, I, wanna, I wanna make that be known as well. You know, I've been trying my best. Some get it. Most don't. They don't really want to get, like, all these different wallets in and shit. But we're trying our hardest, trust me. And uh, we might have something on the table very soon that should uh, please everybody. But let's see how it goes, right? And I think me going to Hong Kong is taking, t taking it to the next level. It's like going to their homeland. I'm coming with gifts. And I'm, I'm bending the knee. And I'm raising my two hands up with a gift like this. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the three wise men when he saw Jesus was born. He had to follow that star, that star to the stable. And I came with, with spices. I came with, I came with precious metals. All right? How did the story go? You guys know that shit. So, yeah, we're taking it to another level there. And uh, we're going to be, you know, joining forces. Okay, cool. So before I start rambling about some other bullshit, let's keep it on, um, on the topic here. So, Rufi. Okay, I'm not too sure if you guys are trying to get Rufy. Rufy appears to be the first rune coin on um, Merlin Layer 2. At least that's what they're advertising it to be. We saw some problems with that. Now, um, you need Merlin Chain Bitcoin to get in. Apparently, it was like six, seven bucks to inscribe this. And Layer 1 was like, I don't know, 50 cents. <laughs> so, <laughs> go figure. It is what it is. You know, anything new, we could expect these types of things. I'm sure they'll fix this over time. But that's on a halt at the moment. Okay, so if you're interested in getting into a free mint that looks like it has potential, it's almost like it reminds me of Sats. 
kind of being this longer mint, although it's not as long. Sats was like fucking five months, but it's one of this longer mint, fair mint, and I'm all for that. That's great. You know, what's going to become of it? I don't know. But, you know, you know how the, how the story goes. Anything that's the first of whatever it is tends to do better than the ones that comes after it. So it's still worth your time. You could get about 200000 per mint, but up to $5 million per wallet. So if you want to go make multiple wallets, and maybe this might be another opportunity, like Avoya, where you made multiple wallets and you got $18,000 like myself. And I actually went public with that, and I told you guys this on a tweet. You guys remember? I made the video I showed y'all. This was before the airdrop. And one motherfucker was like, he was like, he was like, bro, why would you ever do that? What, what do you mean? How are you supposed to make money with this shit? How do you think people made their millions in airdrops? By making one wallet, two wallets? No, bro, they made at least 12. So I went with 32, okay? And obviously, it worked out real good for me. And I showed you guys that before, um, you know, like you could have done that too if you wanted to. And I'm not saying you follow what I do. I'm just, I'm just an open book. I just show you guys what I do. So yeah, if you want to do the same thing with Rufi, you could probably do that too. I just don't know what to expect with that, with that, in terms of it's, you know, if it's going to perform as well, right? Who knows? In my opinion, that's speculation. All right. Now. I want to touch up on a couple of other things, guys, and thank you for joining, guys. We're talking about Merlin Swap's token. You need to get your ass some of these tokens and thank my ass later. Just like I told you guys who, who I told you guys, warrior, I'm telling you MP right now, okay? Get this shit, have it there, and just thank me later, okay? We're going to go to the fucking moon. Um, yeah, somebody was asking me about, about BitSmiley. Now, look, they do have an NFT out there. You guys could get that. You hold that NFT, you could get tokens, etc. Right? It's all about... Guys, we went to Denver for Bitcoin Layer 2. All we saw was Chinese people. And we're in fucking America. Now, there are a few, you know, Layer 2... Like, I'm talking about the new ones, right? So, not Stacks, not Lightning Network. That is American. But I'm talking about the new Bitcoin Layer 2s. Uh, Bitfinity, I guess you could consider them as one of the Western Western uh, Bitcoin layer twos, but they weren't even there. China is running away with this. They got the baton in their hand and they're just running like Hussein Bolt, you know, and everybody else is behind them. So um, it was very eye opening to see that. I wasn't good. I, I, I gotta admit, I did not expect that to see, you know, 97% Chinese in Denver. Um, speaking of the Bitcoin layer twos. So this is why going to Hong Kong is very important. Now, I want to talk about something with RuneStone and all these airdrops that's happening, guys. Um, and by the way, I'm going to do a RuneStone giveaway, too, on my Twitter, though. So you guys got to go over to Twitter. If you're not following me over there, I'm going to be giving away a RuneStone um, for my 20,000 followers to celebrate that, to show my appreciation. Now, I want to tell you guys something here now about airdrops and, 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 and all these things that's happening, right? Now, look, I want to make this crystal clear, guys, and listen up to this. This right here is motherfucking alpha. What I'm about to say is alpha. Smash the like buttons if you want some alpha. Some real alpha. I'm going all alpha. I'm going all alpha Alfonso on you all today. So, basically... This is what I want to say. So the Bitcoin culture, I'm all for this, right? Airdrops is important. Fair mints are important and et cetera and, and et cetera, right? All that stuff is great. Having, you know, fair launches is great. But if it comes to the point, guys, where the Bitcoin culture is going to be changed, where we have expectations of getting shit for free all the time and literally airdrop lands into our lap and it's worth 3,000, two and a half K, right? Like Runestone is right now about that price, right? Roughly. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem for people's psychology. Because the real world does not operate like this. The real world is competitive. You got to fight for what you want to get. You got to earn what you want to get, right? You, you got to put some blood, sweat, and tears out there. So all I'm saying is... Let's not like have the whole psychology be all about expectations where shit's for free. You got to build and you got to deliver it to me uh, for me in my wallet and I get that for free and I can go sell it. You're not going to learn anything from that. Okay? You're not going to learn anything from that. Because what happens later on in your life when you come, to, you go through a problem, you got to go figure it out. You got to, you know, whatever it is, work hard to get your way out of that. You don't have to spend some money. You don't have to fight your way out of it, whatever. I feel like the culture right now in Bitcoin, although we're all for this, we don't want it to be, 
we don't want that to set the standard to be like that forever, bro. Because that's that's a fantasy. That's a fantasy world. The real world don't operate like that. And you're not going to learn nothing from getting shit for fucking free over and over and over. And asking somebody, oh, how do I do this? Oh, this is how you do it. And you get it for free. What are you going to learn? It's like, again, it's like my kids growing up and mommy and daddy's doing everything fucking for them. So all I'm saying is, you know, like... Just don't get too accustomed to this shit, bro. It's not sustainable. <laughs> it's not sustainable. That's all I'll say. And I'll leave it at that. And I'll take your questions. But that is the reality of it all. You know, the world out here is competitive. You got people going to school trying to be get, fighting for the same job. They're fighting for the same woman. Everybody wants a nice house. Everybody wants a nice car. Guess what? Not everybody can get it. And you definitely are going to get that shit for fucking free. Right? So don't get too spun up on this culture where, oh yeah, airdrops is where it's at and um, that's what I want. N nobody ever got fucking rich off of that shit, bro. I'll be like, some people did because they, they did multiple wants. But what I'm saying is that is going to be a wild goose chase for many people. Okay? You know, take advantage of it as, as, as much as you can. But please, don't have your entire mentality, you know, um, to be in that way because that's not how life is. That's all I'll say there. Smash the like button, guys. Thank you so much for joining. We really do appreciate y'all. Let me take some questions in the meantime here. So we did go over Merlin Swap. We did go over Rufy. I gave you guys some alpha on Runestone and other things out there. You need to go and outcompete the people in the market to position yourself to profit. That's what a real bad man does. That's what a real hustler does. A real hustler does not wait on the next big airdrop to land on their fucking lap to make them rich. That's called a welfare check. Okay? Yeah, sure, we look for those, but we can't make that the fucking focal point, bro. I don't want you guys looking for freebies all the time. What the fuck? Go ask a guy walking down the street for a hundred bucks and tell me what he's going to do to you. That's the real world. Okay? <laughs> okay? So... Let's, let's just make that be known here, guys. You know, we have to go and find it. We need to go and research it. And we need to grab the bull by the horns and take advantage of opportunities. That's how you become prosperous, okay? I'll give you guys one more example. So, it's well documented on this channel. We're at 100 people here. I appreciate y'all for joining. It's well documented on this channel, guys, that I was, you know, the first person to show you how to mint BRC20 tokens, making my subscribers with Pepe. I think it was like 500x. Memes on Bitcoin was 300x, etc. But, let's take a look at those numbers, right? This is what I mean by you gotta go hustle. That was a fair launch, a fair mint, which we're all for. But the ticket size, I think it was like... You know, I, I don't even, I can't remember exactly how much, but you know, I mean, like all together it was a nice chunk of change. But when you look at the ticket size of somebody who gets into a fair mint, it's probably on average like 500 bucks when you mint and you mint and you mint and you mint, and that's a lot, right? Now, 500 times, I don't know, let's say it does 100x, that's great. Um, what's that? That's like fucking, what's how much is that? Is that um, 5k? 50k? Hold on. Whatever the point is. Whatever the point is. It's a much smaller ticket size, right? Uh, the, the number is, sorry. Hold on, I need to know that fucking thing. So, 100, let me see, times 100. Yeah, 50K. So, that's still great, right? But when you look at all these other guys making money in investing, right? Where you actually have a larger ticket size. People be putting in, like, fucking, you know, 50,000 to something, 5,000 to something. Now, $5,000 on something that does 100X is way different, right? So, what I'm saying is, if you can find yourself in those types of situations... You know, um, then you're going to be laughing to the bank like, you know, we're talking about 500K. So that's how these, you know, real suits do it. So we're all for everything. We're, we're, we're game all across the board. But, um, you know, I just want to let you guys know the real world does not operate off of airdrops. It doesn't operate off of getting shit for free. It doesn't operate off of somebody doing all the work and, you know, giving it to you. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, sorry if I'm rambling too much on that, but I have to get it off my chest. I want to talk about something with Sats Hunters too a little bit. But first, let me go to the live chat. What's up, brother? GM, was it? MG says, good morning. Good morning to you, broski. Any questions, let me know. The Dunes blowing up runes. <laughs> I know, right? Like I said, I'm going to drop the first token on runes and call it Dunes. Get it? Oh, shit. Broski trading knowledge round. Ah, appreciate you, Fitz. How's it going? 
Sully says it definitely was a good choice to uh, to love the MP ideal. Oh, sorry, to move the MP ideal forward using Merlin Chain today has been fluid. Interesting. Um, Sass Hunters, here we go. So, do you have an idea when Sass Hunters will be coming to decks? So, I don't mind personally, you know, putting Sass Hunters over to Merlin Chain. You know, a Merlin swap rather, but I, I don't think that's um you know we can't do that right now. Obviously, that's going to involve funds as well, or you know, making a, a pool, right, a liquidity pool for the decks. So we'll see how that plays out. But um, listen, guys, listen. People are asking us what is the update with Sats Hunters, right? What is the update? What is the update? This is the update. The update is this. The roadmap's fucking complete. You only have updates when you're building something, but once something's finished, built, there's not much updates. An update on what? But you want us to build a blockchain now? Like, you know what I'm saying? We, we had a goal. We, 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 um, um, you know, we, we fulfilled that goal. And now it's built. You know, we've given marketing. You know, we had YouTubers talking about it. People on Twitter were talking about it as well. I was talking about it. But there's only so much I could do. You know, I, I and people don't understand. Shint, Shint is not a token that fucking money was raised, bro. I had to go and mint shit the same way you had to go mint it or the same way you had to go buy it on the market. But I took the initiative to make a use case of out of it by creating a public inscription tool that allows you to pay with BRC20 tokens and have an ordinal pass. My job here has met expectations and beyond. Plus the marketing. Now, if this is, you know, we all know this is a community token and like all BRC20s are. Now it's time for the community now to go show the world what's there for them to, you know, to, to, to try out or whatever, right? What's out there for the Sat Hunter tool and the token. I think the community now has to try to, you know, be, be picking up the slack a little bit and showing off what they have. This is what I'm going by when I say this whole culture is changing where every fucking thing's for fucking free. It's one fucking sided and expectations goes like this. Bro, I don't know, man. I don't want that culture here. <clears throat> you need to have accountability as well. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So, you know, you can't have one person doing all the heavy lifting and expectations be like, okay, well, we don't got to do nothing. We just, you know, tell you to jump and you say how high. So I hope that makes sense. Do smash the like buttons for joining, guys. If you like that alpha, you know, if you guys enjoy that documentary too, let me know, man. Let me know. Hong Kong's the next stop. It's going to be about a 15 and a half hour flight, bro. Holy shit. That's going to be crazy. I am getting first class, though. It's like this nice little fucking pod. It looks like if I'm in a dentist chair the whole time. And it goes back into like a bed. It's pretty badass. But anyhow, so I just wanted to speak a little bit about the Sats Hunters as well. All right. And that being said, that being said, we're always trying to improve it in terms of more use case, more functionality. Um, and when runes comes out, yeah, we're led to believe that it's it's going to see a spike because now we have to admit, guys, there's not really really many people making ordinal collections anymore. There's not that many people really making a BRC20 token mint anymore, right? However, when runes comes out next month, yeah, we think that how inscribing will will take off once again, and we'll support runes. We'll try to support it as soon as possible. So yeah, we still have a lot to look forward to. So th those are your updates. Those are your updates, and I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the live chat, but that's all I really have to tell you guys when it comes to Sats Hunters. Do smash the like buttons, guys. Come on. <coughs> Francis, your jawline's looking good today, is it? Yeah, I, I was swinging around the kettlebell uh, two days ago. Runestone price after three months. I, I, I don't know, man. Look, all I would say is this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe, I don't know, when Runes goes live, maybe the, I think there's a token coming to this Runestone too. We'll see what becomes of it. But it's just kind of it's kind of weird to me. All these guys who didn't give a fuck about tokens all of a sudden give a fuck about tokens. I remember when like BRC20s came out, bro. Nobody expected this shit to take over, guys. Nobody expected tokens to be the driving force for ordinals. Everybody thought it was going to be um, art. <coughs> art, like all the art nerds out there, like they're all for the art. Or a rare sats. And I think that's actually valuable. <coughs> Excuse me. But nobody expected 
fungible tokens on Bitcoin will be the driving force, will be the catalyst, will be the reason why Ordinals was successful. Now, all these guys at the time who was into art, the Leonidas's of the world and such, you know, which that's fine, whatever you're into, we can't all, you know, be on, you know, be fascinated with the same things. I remember when Ordi came out, he was like, oh, I don't normally do this because it's a token, but I did buy some Ordi. Ordi started to go up, whatever. Then he comes and he says, oh, I regret saying that I bought Ordi. I will never speak about a token again. And all of a sudden, you know, I'd say they were Casey. Casey is like this rare sats guy, right? He made ordinals and then he disappeared for fucking months. The ordinal show was happening and all of a sudden, you know, he makes fun about people with tokens and DGENs, but now he's creating a market for it. It's, it's just kind of puzzling to me. And, and again, I'm just reporting on the, you know, on how things are unfolding, right? Selling my opinion. This is what's going on. So now we have Leonidas coming on with a token, which he's not, he doesn't like tokens, right? And there's a reason behind that because people who get into NFTs, like there's a crowd, right? A lot of people just like NFTs. And then there's a crowd that just likes tokens. I'm a token guy. You know, I've been investing into over fucking 500 startups in crypto since 2017. And, you know, I never was fascinated towards NFTs because of lack of utility. And I believe the reason why NFTs on Ethereum blew up is because there were millions of motherfuckers around the world who were laid off from the jobs or fired, stuck at home, they formed the TV, they missed it on this thing called Bitcoin, and all of a sudden the surge and the rise of this thing called NFTs took place. They didn't want to miss out on that. And then you got people who are former accountants, all of a sudden NFT co-founders. And that's how that went up. But my point is, my fucking point is, um, you know, we got all of these guys, all of a sudden they're all about the token life. Which makes no sense when they were totally against it in the past and they're making all these tokens. I don't fucking know. You know, I'm not saying this, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, you know, it is what it is. It's very, very curious, I'm um, interesting to say the least. You know, so we'll see what becomes of that. But and, and what's the big shipment rules? Like, don't get me wrong, it's gonna be money to be made. Well, for fucking money. But I don't even think rune standard is that big of a deal, bro. Like, you still gotta make a transfer inscription? What can you do? You can do some error jobs? Okay, cool. People just like to go with whatever's fucking popular. Wherever the wind's blowing, what everybody's saying. So, I really don't see the real big difference in runes. Oh, it's Casey's project. Okay, it's Casey's. Okay, cool. So, so what's that? The guy who was against tokens? The guy who didn't give a fuck about tokens? But all of a sudden, when tokens are getting all the love with ordinals, and they're getting all the numbers in terms of inscriptions, all of these inscriptions, when they go to dunes, whatever, dot .io, they're showing all, you know, all of it as BRC20 tokens. They realize that's where the interest is. Well, I guess they want to make something now. You know, it, it's kind of like where they genuinely didn't give a fuck about it, but they want to make a market of it because that's where the market is. So... That's all I'll say. It's more for fucking cloud chasing than it is for anything. But it is what it is. We'll still make our fucking money. <coughs> this coffee's making me fucking sick, I think. I don't think most of you guys were here from the beginning, so you guys won't be able to relate to this shit. <clears throat> to be able to relate. Yeah, 420 million. Okay, cool. Merlin Swap next 100x jam very well could be bro. You know how China does it. China pumps the shit out of their bags. Okay, what else we got here? Hi, can you please help me? Like I am trying to bridge BTC to Merlin Chain from Big Ah oh, shit, bro. You're on your own. I've never used Big Ed in my life. Their wallet. Don't even know where to start, bro. Francis on his aviators. <clears throat> which wallet for Merlin swap I'm not sure what you mean by that but I personally use Unisat GG with the camels I'm born in Hong Kong no crypto tax yo no way bro are you serious fuck might have to fucking set up a company over there Remember, Hong Kong was under the British rule some years ago. I think it was about 10 years ago, and then China recently took it over. Macau, which is another island off the coast of China, which I'm going to as well. Um, I think it's an island. Um, they were under the uh, Portuguese influence before, right? So they do have a Western culture um, behind these, these two countries, well, nations or let's just say places. Okay, what we got here? Any questions? Let me know. 
How can we get Rufy? As I just explained, if you go to Unicross on Twitter, you will see their website. I think it's unicross.xyz. From there, I believe you go to Launchpad, is it? And then you'll, you're able to inscribe this Rufy ticker, 200,000, you know, is the max per wallet. Sorry, the, the max per mint, and then 5 million per wallet. And then just continuously making more wallets if that's what you want to do. So that's how that would work. And I think it's on pause right now. Congratulations on 20,000, brother. Thank you so much, Flacco. <clears throat> Appreciate you. Alpha, alpha, alpha. That is correct. Any other questions, let me know. Well, I got to say, those are some nice sunglasses. Oh, yeah, these yeah, these are pretty old. Had them for some time. They're very durable. They're very durable. That's why. You know, it's like if it, if it hits something, it's not going to dent. It's not going to break. And it has a nice tint on it. It's kind of dirty at the moment. Then got some coffee splashes on it. See? There? <laughs> All good. <clears throat> Rufy, please no more rune. I have enough of that shit. Got like 10 different runes projects. All areas, yeah. I hear you, Flipsy. What's my strategy for runes? Good question. <clears throat> I would say this, man. I, to be honest, I don't think it's much of a strategy when it comes to for runes. <clears throat> because if it's a fair launch, it's like you're very limited to how you could go about doing it, right? So, especially if it's hard coded. So, the first 10 tokens apparently are supposed to be hard coded from Casey, which means they're going to be long mints and they're going to be limited per mint. <clears throat> like, uh, to be honest, guys, look, this is really great for somebody who is looking for capital at very nominal upfront cost. Okay, so a lot of people like yourself, and that's fine. And and I would still participate in many runes mint, many runes mint. Just for number one, I gotta do it as part of my job for you guys running this channel. And number two, I'm just generally interested in it. Um, but for me personally, I think there's much bigger and better opportunities out there than getting into something that's just like you know fucking you know gonna mint for so long. Um, I can invest like how OKX Ventures invests, how fucking Coinbase Ventures invests. That's what I'm looking at. That's why I'm making these trips here. So um, my strategy, it's going to be simple. Just make sure I get as much as I can for the, of the first token, whatever those limitations are, the max mint and such, and per wallet and what have you, and that's that. But definitely the first token I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a lot of Bitcoin on in terms of minor fee um, and everything else. I still believe there will be tokens going to the Runes protocol that's going to incorporate some form of maybe fundraising, right, pre-market. Um, and some launch pads as well. We have Runes Terminal. Be on the lookout for Runes Terminal. I think they're going to be launching some good projects as well. Like, you know, we saw this happen, guys, with BRC20 tokens where the culture was, okay, first come, first serve, it's a fair launch, right? That, that pretty much was the culture, and it was really great. <clears throat> but then we saw that divert to these BRC20 tokens doing pre-sales, right? We saw Alex Lab do this. More notably, uh, more recently, we saw... Um, you know, um, um, Lever Fi do this with Orange, right? And Orange did a sustainable, what's it sitting at right now? I think it's about an A10X still right now from that price. So to be honest, it's like, and, and those extras comes faster than a fair launch. So if you can find a legitimate project that has a good reason of why they're raising, maybe because they're building real technology, right? That's gonna take developer time and not just dropping a token that's gonna be a meme token and that's it. They actually have a UI, they have um, um, software involved, right? Like a Web3 wallet or something or whatever it is. A trading, a decentralized leverage trading platform, kind of like Surf.1. Right, and I'm not saying that that's Merlin Chain, but I'm just saying Ruins could have these types of projects that are going to need funding. Those are projects I'm going to be looking to getting into, and they're not going to do a fair mint. They may do an airdrop to some degree, but they're mainly going to be wanting wanting to collect funds, and I think that's where the opportunities are going to be as well. But you can't go wrong. Wherever you know, fair mints are fine, but I think they're very linear baby footsteps on creating wealth like guys do you think getting airdrops right for the most part let's be honest it's gonna buy you a fucking home for your family it's gonna buy you like you know whatever you want like i, I don't think so i don't think these airdrops are gonna 
give people the life that they really want, which is the end goal, which is having time. I think it's enough to give you, I don't know, maybe pay off some bills for, for temporarily. Maybe it's good enough for you to go eat some nice dinners, but then you're back to square one. See what I'm saying? It maybe it's great. Don't get me wrong. It's great for upfront capital without trying to find fiat to put on the blockchain. Absolutely. Right? But make sure you use those gains or, or that free money from the airdrop into something that could give you a better multiplier. Because, bro, looking for airdrops constantly, bro, it tells me you're doing something wrong. It tells me you're not putting the profits from the airdrops into something that could streamline and grow your capital bigger and bigger. You know what I mean? So um, it, it's just not sustainable. It's not a good way to live. It's not a good way to invest. It's a great way to take advantage of it, but make sure you take advantage of it so you're not always looking for another airdrop, another airdrop, another airdrop, like a fucking crackhead on the street looking for crack in the fucking sidewalks all the time. You know what I mean? Or you're at the fucking welfare building outside waiting uh, in the long line to get in to get your free check. So you don't want to become that guy, bro. I want you guys to be smart. I want you guys to be hustlers. And I want you guys to go on, out compete the rest of the market for yours. I know how you do that. You do that with a little bit of capital. You do that with some smarts and with some research. And anybody could do it. And you got to know how to fucking, you know, turn a dollar into $10 and $10 into 100 Does that make sense? Okay, what do we got here? <sighs> okay. Grant Lee Francis, wouldn't it make sense to wait for Casey to inscribe the first 10 runes rather than buying it into Runestone or any of these runes, uh, miners, NFT? Want to know the best way to position myself for runes? Let me read that again. Wouldn't I wait for Casey to inscribe the first 10? Yeah, rather than buying into Runestone. Look, I would say this. Since it's Leonidas with Runestone, I think that has an exception because it's Leonidas. You know, I call him Lord Leo. Everybody praises the guy, everybody likes the guy, everybody trusts the guy to a certain degree. And I think that is an exception there, right? So, yeah, if you have the capital for that, you might want to look into at least getting one. By the way, I'll be giving away one. Okay, go to my Twitter and more details on that will be coming out shortly. But, um, yeah, if you could afford it, go ahead. Ga that's a gamble I would be willing to take if I was you, if I didn't get one airdrop. However, what you said on the um, on the former there, the first half of your message, definitely waiting on Casey to make the first 10. I don't even think Casey's making the first 10. Is it him? I think he's initiating the code and whoever drops those, those, those tokens first because if we're waiting on one guy to do everything, this is like fucking the president of the United States of America. It's very centralized. And I think Casey was also kicking people out of fucking GitHub before. <laughs> so he he definitely got an ego problem to a certain degree. He really does. Um, you know, you know, so yeah. If everything has to filter through one guy, I don't want any part of this long term, bro. I'll take advantage of the hype. I'll make money off of dumb fucks, right? Because that's what the game is, right? Not everybody can make money in a market. Somebody got to buy, somebody got to sell. Then that person got to look for a profit to sell to the next guy coming in. That's just how financial markets move, bro. <laughs> so this is why I try to tell you guys, like airdrops are great, but you think the real world operates off of fucking airdrops and everybody getting in and doing this, then there'll be no way for you to make a profit, bro. That's just not how it works. It just cannot work. That's called a utopia. That's called a utopia, okay? You guys are living in, like, in the land of rainbows and unicorns. Yeah, take advantage as much as you can, bro. But trust me, bro, you're in for a real surprise. You're gonna get slapped across your face in the real world one day, bro, you know? And it's gonna be like a kid that was spoiled all of his life. He got to be 35, and then he went through real problems for the first time in his life. Fucking crumbles, next thing you know, he's living on the street. Guy's homeless. Because he couldn't even handle how to, he got fired from his job. He doesn't know where the next check's coming from. Start drinking, start doing drugs, now he's living on the fucking streets. Come on. So, you don't want reality to, to give you a jump kick to the face. Smash the like buttons. Okay, let me go down a bit more. <clears throat> try the duck in Hong Kong. At least 100x better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try that for sheezy. Rusty, can I sleep on your couch for a week to see how to be a real... <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll just have the camera running. I could do behind the scenes. Francis Ordinal's revolution up and out of Bumbaclat house. And we got fucking the Crypto Factor, too. How you doing, bro? 
I prefer tokens over, over NFTs just because I'm a better at it. Yeah, I mean, like, look, I would say this. I like tokens over NFTs because they actually have technology back behind it. Um, they're more liquid. You don't got to raise your hand saying, okay, don't worry about that. I did work out earlier and I do sweat naturally when I drink coffee. Um, you don't raise your hand saying, you don't say, hello, I got an NFT to sell. Another guy's like, okay, I'll buy it. How much? Oh, it's going for um, 0 0.105 Bitcoin. Okay, all right, da da. No, I like a fucking liquidity pool. Go in, come out, boom, bam, thank you, madame. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and I think a lot of people, again, who like NFTs, they're too fucking pussy because they don't want, they don't want to be called out for something that went up and then down. They can't handle... They, they can't handle losing money in a fast way because it looks bad on the graph. That's the fucking facts. A lot of people don't have the belly for it, not just for the gains going down, but the reputation. They're not willing to risk their reputation on something that they actually believe in. You know what I mean? That's how it goes down, right? This is why NFTs are a safe bet. Gradually goes up or gradually goes down. Don't get me wrong. You can have some full price fucking dump, but you know what I'm saying. What do I think about Pulse Chain? Bro, I called Pulse Chain. Told you guys he ain't gonna do shit. I told my community when they were getting into Pulse Chain that if Richard Hart's not on camera, that's a dead chain. Because you invested into Richard Hart. They're like, oh no, well, um, um, what about Polkadot? If Gavin Wood's not there, then, then you know, it, the, the chain still runs. The difference between Pulse Chain and every other chain is this. Every other chain, for the most part, does not have a founder in front of the camera for four hours a day convincing little kids why his chain is better than Bitcoin and making them laugh and chilling and doing all these things. When you take that individual or that energy out of the equation, it becomes a very sub-average investment. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Richard Hart right now is, I think he's asking Putin for asylum. He wants to share a bunk bed with Snowden and Putin's fucking... Whatever, the White House, whatever they call it in Russia. You know what I'm saying? The guy's like a fugitive right now. And I don't know, last time I heard, Paul Shin was at back at the, the, what do you call it? The sacrifice price. And everybody's like happy for that when everybody was screaming 1,000x, at, at, you know, at launch. So I don't know. That's my take on Paul Shin. I really don't give a shit. Adam says, airdrop season is really just marketing um, exactly season. Moving forward, business people have been paid to participate in marketing is better than them not being paid. Let me read that again. Airdrop season is really just marketing season. Moving forward in business, people have been paid to participate in marketing. Well, I think there's like, there's departments. There's a marketing department, you know. Um, there is a, I don't know, logistics department. There's all types of different things, customer service, whatever. I think marketing is actual real apartment. You know what I mean? Um, I think airdrops is a way of the the projects to show the community members, hey, look, we want real organic com community members. And in exchange for the most part, they got to test out these, you know, the test net, right, of this particular protocol. So it's a win-win for both sides. Um, but what I'm talking about from an investor, from somebody who's trying to get into the next big thing, Airdrops is at the bottom of the barrel. It's the last thing. It's still great. It's good. Yes, yeah, still go after it. But all I'm saying is don't cut yourself short by only looking at that. Try to look at how these other guys do it and where the real money's at. You need to get some of those bloodhounds of yours sniffing out the opportunity, the real opportunity. That's all I'm saying. I do appreciate you guys for joining me on this random live stream from the car. It's been a while. Ordinal's revolution up in the house. Bit Smiley versus MakerDAO. Bit USD versus Die. Bro, didn't the guy who created MakerDAO ironically die? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at that. That's so bad. Where's wood? I think I got a real wood in this car. This is like piano wood. Where is it? Knocking wood. Um. Yeah, I don't know. All I would say is this. With stable coins, let's be honest, right? You know, we saw what happened with this, the pegging in the past, right? This is a new stable coin. It's very fascinating. It's very interesting. 
you know, being on Bitcoin, the first, um, you know, Bitcoin native stable coin. So is it going to be governed by the same stuff as Bitcoin, you know, which is no smart contracts? I don't know how that's going to work. Like, I don't know exactly how that's going to work. There's limited information out there on it. I would love to have BitSmiley on the channel and um, maybe they could speak about it more. But I'm all for stable coins on Bitcoin as long as the protocol works. You know, I think they're doing a little bit more than just that. They're also inventing their own standard, um, you know, so I forget the name of it, but we'll see how that plays out. But BitSmiley, definitely bullish. They have really acclimated themselves as being one of the first movers and one of the earlier ones. And to know that how you could get into these coins at the beginning of a potential bull run instead of the, the tail end of a bull run is always a good thing, okay? You want to get in at the beginning of the bull run because as the bull run actually progresses, these tokens has a good chance of going up in value as well with the rest of the markets. The crypto factor up in this bitch, bro. What are you saying, dog? You're getting me all giddy over here. So you can easily set up a company online for 3K. Yeah, well, pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> bro, I went to go all out, okay? I was going to Antigua, a small island in the Caribbean, to do all of these things. My company was going to be set up in uh, Cayman Islands. Okay, and I was going to be living in Antigua, and yeah, I went through a very bad experience. What I did, a, it was going to be an investment by citizenship by investment. I was going to make an investment into some property there, which I put a down payment down. Pretty much got screwed for over half a million dollars, real talk. So I kind of lost faith in these sort of like tax shelter places. And, you know, if you set up yourself properly, even in a first world nation, it's not even that bad. Like owning a corporation and a company gives you so much more tax benefits than an individual, right? Um, so yeah, I mean like, hey, if you could set up shop elsewhere, it doesn't hurt either, but just make sure the people that are handle, handling your file are trustworthy people. Remember how the saying goes, lawyers always win. The lawyers are the ones that are always gonna win. No matter if you get what you want or not, they're always gonna get paid. And the same is true for like these, the, the guys like that little faggot guy that crosses his fucking feet when he talks all the time, Nomad Capitalist, Andrew. He's the one who introduced me to these people that got me fucked and he got paid fucking 150K, that dumb fuck. 150K for none, for fucking, for throwing me in a fucking ditch. You know what I mean? So, you guys know Nomad Capitalist, the guys with the fucking, the glasses on, he crosses his fucking feet, like he got no balls and he's talking. Anyways, those guys got 150k for none too, so it's all good. Uh, just be very careful. If I were to do this again, I would just, since I know the process, I will fill out the documentation myself, bro. You know, not get anybody involved um, and speak to actual government officials in that country directly instead of going through a shady ass fucking island lawyer in my case. Anyways, I'll stop talking about that. Oh, uh, what do we got here? Are you? <laughs> no, Omni Queen. Am I avoiding talking about Alex? Oh, like this is how I operate, right? Um, hun, Omni Queen. I love Alex. I love the CEO. When I, when I was in Denver, I saw her. She's like, oh my God, I remember you. You were, you were, um, you know, what, what, what she said? You were supporting us before anybody else or one of the earlier supporters, something like that. She gave me a hug and it was fine. But as an investor, Omni Queen and everybody who's watching this, you want to look for the newest projects that has the most potential. Why? Because they tend to have a smaller market cap, right? And as an investor, you want to get into something that's small that could grow over time. Now look at Alex. Alex has already grown. It's still not, not like a crazy high market cap. Still got room to grow too. But I'm looking for bigger and better opportunities from a ROI standpoint as an investor. And that involves looking for new up and coming gems. Fucking right I love Alex, but I, I think I can make more money elsewhere. Right, we're with new tokens, new projects that are serious and legitimate. That's going to be solving a solution that's in demand, and I think that's Bitcoin Layer Twos right now. And I think the hype with the runes will come as well. And that's where my focus is. Um, not avoiding Alex, but I think there's not much for me to talk about. I think at the beginning it was okay because not many people knew about it, and right now a lot of people know about them, and there's a lot of people talking about Alex. And I don't think Alex personally really needs me to talk about them. <laughs> I'm not going to really make a difference anymore. So. I think, yeah, I, I, I'm always looking for the next exciting new opportunity. Fucking hell. How? How? How is this phone going to freaking die? 
Anyways, the phone's gonna die soon, guys. It's overheating apparently. We're about 50 minutes. I think I'll end it in about two minutes. My favorite ruin project? I don't even know, bro. I gotta see. I, I can't really say none right now. I think the Guardian one's okay. Uh, what do we else? Let me go lower down to here. People are laughing. Whoa, be careful of the lawyers. Oh, fuck, those lawyers are bastards. Uh, Venom Network, I don't know much about, to be honest. I'll definitely take a look at that. Um, I heard a couple things about them. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much for joining. I wasn't expecting such a crowd over 100 people here. My first live stream from the car since I came back. Well, first live stream from the car in a while. Um, we talked about Berlin Swap Token. We talked about Rufy. We talked about Runestone. We talked about Sad Hunter. Those are the updates that I wanted to tell you guys. And uh, yeah, 